are you, Kevin? Doing well, yourself? Nice to see you again. Uh, the last time I saw you, we were in uh, Seville in Spain. Yeah, Sevilla. Right. Driving the, the, the L LC. LC. Yeah, we had that uh, yellow one. I know, that was amazing. Yeah, it was like through the narrow streets in the yeah. old town. And then we went to the truck. That was really, really yeah. cool. So now we're here in uh, outside Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, we are in what is like, I guess, the third product of this new generation. That's right, yeah. Of, uh, of, of Lexus, Lexus that started with the LC and then the LS and now the ES. Right. We've driven a, a few hours already, a few, almost a couple hundred miles, not even, I don't think. But, I mean, what do you think? I mean, you're the Lexus expert, so tell me. Well, what, what? I mean, we started off this morning with the ESF Sport. So that's brand new. Never done that before. So the difference between the current ES and the ESF Sport, I mean, it's night and day. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not comparable at all. Because now, of, now it's not only cosmetic, right? It used no. to be only like a little trim here, a yeah. little... But now it's like actually the driving experience is different. Absolutely different. I mean, the ESF Sport, to me, driving it, had this like weight to it. It had a real... Like substance, substance in everything, to right? It. Yeah. I mean, it was what you would expect from a, a luxury manufacturer in the midsize sedan category and the way that Lexus is, is positioning this car as a entry-level luxury car comparable to an E-Class, I mean a C-Class or a Yeah, I, <laughs> it's interesting that you got a little bit confused because I was too during the presentation they were talking about the the C-Class, the 3 Series, the A4, but to me this car is pretty large. I mean you can fit yeah, five absolutely. people in here. Yeah. So I will convert it even more to the E-Class, the 5 Series, the 6, the A6, but I guess it's a matter of size and pricing mostly. I, mostly, I right? think pricing is the way that they've determined that it's an entry-level car because as they said in the presentation this morning that this car should start at around $39,000. Just incredible. Which, I mean, this is a lot of car yeah. for $39,000. And so what they've what they're doing is they're 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 straddling this line between entry level luxury and mid-size luxury and potentially dominating the whole field. Yeah, a, a, yeah, a big spectrum that will go into two segments, which is really really smart from them, I think. Well, it, and it, in a way, what they're doing is they're filling a gap that no one else is really chasing. I mean, there are comparables. I mean, you can look at Buick, maybe Lincoln, as having vehicles in that same sort of yeah. genre, but n not at the not with a badge like Lexus. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. the reputation and uh, like the loyal customers that they already have. I mean, the others are trying to conquer. They Lexus is now trying to to spread the, 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 the field, I guess, right? Right. And I mean, they, they've done similar things like the NX, for example, was in between the sort of segments as well in mm -hmm. terms of its size. And, and the NX has been a real success. Yeah, right? actually last week I was at a presentation of the, of the new RDX, which was the number one in that segment. And now the NX has like surpassed them uh, with in, in a year or yeah, exactly. Uh, so less than a year. I mean, it is the the NX now is the second best selling Lexus in yeah. the lineup, and so now they're taking their they're not quitting on sedans. I think that that's a pretty I think it's a pretty big pretty big bold step in terms of you know saying that they're still still worthwhile to drive a sedan. It's still and well, and, and to sell because yeah, they exactly. said like three hundred and fifty thousand a year. They're probably gonna sell may sell maybe what like. Fifty thousand a year, maybe. Yeah, and that's, and that's, that's not that's not bad no, at all. And I mean that, as they said, it was it's a three hundred and fifty thousand unit yeah. segment, and that's entry level. If you take the entry level and midsize, yeah. add them together, it's it's a really potentially huge, game changing vehicle, because the ES previously was a vehicle that didn't have the performance dynamics. Mm -hmm that you... It was just like a, a little bit above the Avalon mm -hmm. and then a little bit of trimming and materials that weren't that good anyway. Yeah. So it's completely different now. And like the lightness of that vehicle, of every ES before this, the, it was always felt like a vehicle that was based on a, on a Toyota. Like yeah. it always felt as though the underpinnings were 
still and this is completely unlike that it it really does feel like a transformed vehicle i mean they obviously they use some parts and like some um the, the development work and all that but they really you can tell that they have put extra steps into the pr a production of a different car so what they were talking about today is there's the G the gak mm -hmm. platform which is what lexus is branding at from the tn uh, Toyota Next Generation yeah. architecture, but it's not simply them taking the Avalon chassis and putting a Lexus skin on it. What they've done is they've transformed a lot of the underpinnings to firm up the ride. You know, sway bars. They've added. They've added a lot of additional adhesives and laser spot welding. Yeah. And in the interior, all the materials. I mean, yeah. you can really tell the difference. And that's why, as you were saying before, I mean, it feels like a very solid, substantive car, like really, really good quality. But I have to ask you something, because, I mean, you are <laughs> I know you the Lexus expert, yeah, yeah. and for years, not only Lexus, but Toyota didn't have Apple CarPlay. So when you <laughs> first experienced that, I think that's the, the most amazing thing that you would notice in this car, well, right? <laughs> I mean... I was asking you, I was like, oh, look what, what it's doing. It? Well, look, look at all these things that it that it's potentially can do. And, yeah. and I'm going through my phone and listening to podcasts <laughs> and thinking, oh my goodness, like, this is really amazing. And you're, and you're, and you're looking at me like, well, it, isn't it just CarPlay? Like, know, have I they know. done something different? Yeah, welcome to the 21st yeah, century. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's, it's funny because as you say, as a person that really only drives Lexus vehicles, the idea of it has been so foreign so you know. being able to access my phone like through the screen and it's a giant screen in here i mean yeah 12.3 12 .3 12 .3 inches. inches i mean they had to they had to make a, a modified version of carplay in order to fit this display yeah and so you know i'm paging through my phone and I'm <laughs> looking at my text and i'm like this is really the way that it should have been <laughs> for so long yeah for ten, uh, the past 10 yeah. years and uh i think that and then in addition, this uh, Amazon Alexa uh, oh, yeah, integration. That too, yeah. I think between those two, the big, the biggest complaint with Lexus vehicles has been in the past uh, their infotainment and you know remote touch specifically. Yeah. And by adding, and, and, I'm yeah, sorry for interrupting. Yeah, for sure. But like the boring design. Oh, yeah, that oh, has yeah. changed oh, yeah, completely. For sure, yeah. But you, you had this, uh, you know, they, all these vehicles that they've had have been so bold lately and, and the, the design has been so elevated and yet inside people didn't feel that the tech, the tech was, up to that, yeah. was up to the same level. And just by bringing in these two new technologies, what they've done is they've added a alternate interfaces that avoid the use of remote touch altogether. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can talk to Siri or you can talk to Alexa, and they interface directly with your with your navigation, which is really one of the only things you use. The yeah. in, you know the onboard navigation, and there are obviously other things, but it really is a very big step oh, forward. Yeah, <laughs> So design, performance, materials, and technology, they, they have the whole package now. Right. And I mean, the design of this car, you know, yeah, obviously nice. influenced by the LS, but still unique enough that you're not going to mistake them on the road. I oh, mean, no, yeah. They, they, they do look similar, but it's a family resemblance. It's a, it's a brother, brother. Which is not a bad thing. No, yeah. and I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not any different than what, you know, German brands have been doing. Exactly. Forever. Yeah, because if you see the S-Class and the E-Class and the the C-Class, they look very similar yes. too. And Audi even more, I think. And and I think that borrowing and cribbing the design of the LS for a more mass market vehicle is, it's a, like the design is strong enough that you can do that. I don't think that it's, it's not a matter of trying to, you know, shoehorn a design into, I mean, yeah, it, yeah, like it's, force it into exactly, something else. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not like the introduction of the spindle grill, the original spindle grill, mm -hmm. where it was, you know, very much grafted on. These cars are, are designed from the ground up to have the spindle grill and to, to, to sort of exemplify that design. 
throughout the, the vehicle and, and throughout the rest of the design. Yeah. So now they already already have all the all the crossovers SUVs with the new design and the LS, the ES, the GS. So the like the, the last one is the IS, I think, right? Yeah. So well, the GS is the GS design is is getting old now. Yeah, but it it still has like and a it, big screen. Yeah. I mean the, the big grill and all that yeah. already. I think that with Lexus recently they've come out with the LS and LC mm -hmm. and those are those are big ticket highly expensive vehicles so the concern has always been how are they going to take this elevated design and and put it into a vehicle that sells as you said you know 50,000 yeah, in, in the yeah, United yeah. States and so there's this was a really big step for them as a brand and I think that they they really have managed to nail it there are, there are things that people might not like. I mean, I'm not a big fan of this cup holder. Yeah, like these big holes <laughs> big hole you know, but, but I mean, that's that's, that's a, small, a minor, that's a minor, a minor, minor thing. A minor yeah. thing. And I mean, when you start talking about cup holders as the main thing that <laughs> you're know, concerned about, you know. like that is that, that really illustrates like yeah, the strength, well, how, the overall how strength. Are, great. Well, we're gonna keep driving back to uh, Nashville here. Unfortunately, we have a Nissan Leaf, which is going really slow. <laughs> That's the way it is. Yeah. So we're gonna respect the the rule because there's no passing here. So absolutely. It's been a pleasure to today. you, Kevin. Yeah. And uh, maybe so we'll drive together with the fourth inception of this new era for Lexus Prison. I hope. Thank you. Yeah, for sure.